Are GPS receivers and their databases always perfect? Unfortunately, there are some gaps even in our most sophisticated IFR navigation tools. One example is that some instrument procedures you'll find in the FAA publication or available in the Jeppesen plates won't be found in our GPS databases. You may know that departure procedures like some ODPs, which are only published textually, won't be included in the database. This is okay because they typically only provide for one turn or so. But in rare cases, a graphically depicted ODP won't be found in the GPS database. Here we'll plan an IFR flight in Montana between Livingston and Billings. The routing is straightforward. Each airport has an on-field VOR between which we can navigate along Victor 2. Livingston has an ODP thanks to the high terrain in the area, and it's a graphically depicted one, the Livingston 2. We'll use runway 22 for this departure, which if we're able to make the required climb gradient should be no problem. We'll have a look at putting our flight plan into the unit. First, we'll look at the G1000. We'll put our departure into the origin on the flight plan page of the MFD, Livingston, KLVM. We'll then input our destination, Billings, KBIL. Now let's bring up the procedures. We'll hit PROC, then scroll to select departure, and hit enter. Normally we'd have a choice in the departure field, but it just says none here. The Livingston 2 ODP isn't here. This isn't just a G1000 issue. Let's look at the Garmin 650, another popular GPS platform. Here we have our flight plan loaded in with just the departure and destination again, and if we go back, tap PROC, then go to departures, we see once again that there is none available. Even ForeFlight isn't much help. We've got our airports in the flight plan box on top, and normally we should be able to tap procedure on the top right and departure options would show up, but no Livingston 2 either. We can pull up the plate on ForeFlight like we normally would though, just not in the procedure advisor here. Let's dive into the procedure itself to see why it might be missing from all these databases. Let's make a list of each step of the procedure as it applies to us. The first instruction is a climbing right turn heading 270. This of course comes only after climbing to 400 feet above the departure end of the runway, as with any departure. Next, from that 270 heading, we're going to intercept the 246 radial from the Livingston VOR and fly that outbound. Now see what it says here, aircraft departing eastbound. Our flight plan has taken us to Billings along Victor 2, so we are eastbound. In that case, we'll want to continue our climb via this 246 radial we've intercepted until reaching 6,600 feet. At that altitude, we'll continue the climb, turning right direct to the Livingston VOR. Once passing the VOR, we continue our climb along the 070 radial en route. So that's us. Then it says all other aircraft and has separate steps for them. Those steps terminate at the Bozeman VOR towards the northwest. So basically, this procedure ends either at the Livingston VOR on the 07 radial if you're eastbound, or at the Bozeman VOR for everyone else. Usually these options are handled by having different transitions on the departure, but that's not the case here. There are no separate transitions. You as the pilot make the decision if the eastbound route applies or not. It's not assigned to us with the transition. Because of this, there's no way to program either option into the departure procedure itself. We have to step in and navigate a bit of this manually. Here's one way you might do that and still save yourself some trouble. On our flight plan page on the MFD, rather than try to load a procedure, we can have the first in route fix be the Livingston VOR. From there, we can build an airway segment for Victor 2, having it end at the Billings VOR. The missing piece is the turn to intercept the radial outbound and then that big right turn inbound of the VOR. But once at the VOR, we can pick up navigation with the GPS. The first part we'll need to use ground aids for, or perhaps program in radials to our GPS. So we'll put the Livingston VOR into our Nav 1 and flip it active to get it identified and in green. We want to set the course to the 246 radial as depicted in the DP. Our first turn is to 270, so we could bug that heading on our HSI. We could set our cruise altitude, let's say it's 11,000 feet. Let's activate heading mode for the flight director. We can also set our climb airspeed to 100 knots, and we're okay to roll. We stay on runway heading until 400 feet, which will be just past 5,000 MSL on our altimeter. Once past there, we'll make our first turn to 270 as bugged. We roll out and continue the climb. Our next step is to intercept the radial. We could switch to nav mode to have the flight director assist with this. Now we're in heading mode still, with VOR mode armed, for when we're close enough to intercept. It's at this point we can engage our autopilot if desired. 
will soon be turned on to that intercept as VOR mode goes active. We need to be watching for 6,600 feet, as this is where we make our big right turn back to the VOR. Let's bug our heading for that turn, just to some place on the HSI that'll initiate a turn and give us time to fine tune our navigation. Here's 6,600 feet, so we'll go back into heading mode, which starts that turn. We should be navigating back to the VOR. We could tune this on the green needles, but since we went to the trouble of programming the Livingston VOR into our flight plan before we took off, we could just call that up and go direct. Let's hit the CDI hard key to bring up the pink needles, and once again flip into nav mode to track the GPS. When we pass the station, we continue on our next leg along Victor 2, and we're now nicely established en route. So we had to do a little extra work on this procedure than if it were in our GPS database. This one is kept out because of that awkward decision tree that doesn't fit with how the procedure options work in the database. But there are plenty of other reasons why a procedure might not be in the database or it might be amended, such as lacking a lower minimum or something. Check out your procedures before you fly them and make sure you're always comfortable flying them with just the minimum equipment.